So actually, um, next up is Wang, Wang Zhenyao. And so he represents the, he's the dean of Beijing Normal University, China Phil Philanthropy Research Institute. And today his topic will be integration of business and commonwealth and challenges in the era of charitable econ economy. Um, he has over 20 years of experience working at the Ministry of Civil Affairs and is most recently, most recently is the Director General of the Department of Social Welfare and Promotion of Charities. And so, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's welcome him up to the stage so he can talk about charitable economy. Thank you. I'm very glad to have this opportunity to share with you about CSR, such an important topic. Today, what I'm going to share with you is related with CSR. It's one of our achievements. So the basic concept is we believe global economy is now at an era of charitable economy. So at this time, a new trend emerges, which is for business and commonwealth. They start to integrate with each other. That also brings a series of significant challenges. So what do we do? First, I want to say, according to our studies, actually the mankind has entered the era of charitable economy. And for the charitable, charitable economy, it's actually an integration of charity and business. So when we're talking about CSR, actually, not only in China, but also in the global community, in developed countries, CSR is already an integration of charity and business, and it's integration of maximum profits and maximum social good. The evidence is that this very simple figure. So it's we're now at a turning point of world economic development in 2001. According to World Bank data, the GDP of all countries in the world, when added up, it was 32 trillion US dollars. But in 2011, it developed to a major turning point. It was 70 trillion US dollars in 2011. And in 2012, it reached 72 trillion US dollars. And in 2001, the world GDP per capita was 5,301 US dollar. But until 2011, it reached 10,000 US dollar already. In the year 2012, it is another addition of 200 US dollar. So there is an unavoidable trend to us all. Since 2001, the whole mankind had entered into the per capita GDP 10,000 US dollar stage. You would wonder, what does it mean for us? GDP per capita 10,000 US dollar means that this is the very first time in human history 
the economic condition reached such a high level, and the world will change accordingly. If you want to identify a country's economy level, we usually use two standards. First of all, we will see whether the country reached the mid-income level. The other standard is whether it's the developed country. And 10,000 US dollar is one of the criteria for a developed country. For what economy? 10,000 US dollar per capita. It means the whole society is getting into a more developed society. Mainland China, including the whole world, is also developing rapidly. In China, the companies are in a turning point as well. China's GDP per capita has already reached $6,700 and on its track towards $10,000. US dollar. When the GDP per capita reached $10,000, the economic structure will change. The change lies on the fact that the third sector, tertiary sector, becomes more bit developed. For developed countries, usually tertiary industry represents 70 percent. For the types of economy, it will also evolve. In the past, it is consumption-driven, for example, nursing, health care, tourism, child care. Not until now, these industries become pivotal to certain economies. In 2003, the tourist in China is already reaching 320 million. This standard already become the main economic criteria. In the past, we may think you travel too much. It means you are not doing your work well. But everything changed. Looking at last year's data, the overall spending on tourism has already reached 10 times higher than before. Because the scale is going up so rapidly, as well as economic growing speed is slowing down. That is a scenario that is facing us all. For the economic development speed, for those developed countries, usually it is lower than 3% or maximum 5%. For those developed countries, their GDP growing is 3%. We laugh at them. But if when China gets to that stage, it will not do anything good either. In UK or Germany, their GDP growing can be as low as 1%, but that's the reality. The world's economy structure has been changing. Humankind is also paying more attention to quality instead of just the quantity as in the past. In this transition period, we need to solve the conflict between the oversupply or over-demanding of the product or services that was before. Now, we are trying to seeking for even better solution. Economy and the whole society has gotten further integrated. For the tertiary industry, they are becoming more and more important to the whole world. For world economy, it is not only the requirement from the society. It is the definite trend that it will always go up instead of falling down. A lot of changes happened. 
So when we talk about charitable economy, what do I mean by saying so? In the past, you don't have economic foundation, so nothing can be done. The economic value will decide what you can do politically. But now, you got money in your pocket, but you suddenly realized a lot of the things are even more difficult. It is the time that we realize the fact, the value of the society. We also decide the whole economic trend and structure, the valuation, and how we understand the world is also changing. In Beijing, as we all know, what you care the most is the pollution. But three to four years ago, the Beijing needs. When we talk about the smog and the pollution, people think it's not that big problem. Back then, there were some words that the Western world are trying to mess China up by talking about pollution too much. But this year, in the recent few years, no one talking that way anymore. China is changing rapidly, but no matter what, you are still only one component of the whole society. In the new era, from a charity point of view, modern services, economic development, it's becoming more and more overlapping with each other. Business and the charity is no longer isolated. This is the irreversible trend. With the overlapping getting more and more bigger, we will start to see the integration of these two factors. A structural change is happening and is on the go. Under this context, people will start to ask, will China change accordingly? Or what is the future trend for China? What will China be like in the future? I have been managing China Philanthropic Research Institute for quite a long time. I think the change in China is so quick, but how it is. A couple of days ago, the State Council had a meeting. Premier Li Keqiang said again in that meeting, he set up three principles for philanthropy. He wants us to be execute all sorts of revolution and changes. But what's more important is we're having a new structure overall. We are having a new society. In the past, it has never been said by the government that you should deal with the relationship between government and society, accelerate the disintegration between politics and the economy. In the past, we have never talk about the connection between society and economy like now. For the 18th NPC in the third plenary session and in all other institutions meetings, we are all talking about the connection between the society and the economy like this. The connection between government and the whole society needs to be based on two standards. These two needs to be in tie with each other before you can find the right solution to solve the possible conflict. So a new society framework is being established accordingly. To go with the trend, a lot of updated policy is also set up. In the past, we usually don't talk about religion, but now 
Dharma policy about religion as well. We are promoting religious charity work. It is forbidden for the social organization to purchase social services. In the past, people think that is the source of all problems, and we have restricted, but now the bar is completely open. There are also a lot of foundation. In 2012, only one charity organization had spent over 100 million RMB. A lot of other charity workers and individuals also start to do their work. In my point of view, in the recent few years, Chinese society experiencing a structural adjustment. During this adjustment, if we look at the circle that was the original society, it is going bigger and bigger because the economic factor and the political factor becomes the new component. We have Mr. Mao here as well. I believe he has more thoughts than me. In the past, economy, society, and politics are all separated. But now, we are growing into a bigger society. This is one of the important changes in the charitable society era. Looking at all the donations in China, in 2013, the amount reached 136.3 billion already. Despite all the doubts and concerns, 2013 still witnessed such a high amount. That is a historical high. There are some philanthropists. They said that they will donate several hundreds of millions and billions. Even the different entrepreneurs, including Jack Ma, they will also make commitment to make more charity organizations. In China mainland, we basically have one more foundation every day. They are mainly organized by the companies or the individuals. Now in China, we have more than 2,000 of those already. The development of charitable economy is not limited so. In 2013, we started in the very first year about how to feed the older generation. To nursing the older generation, that is becoming a national strategy to get developed. Modern philanthropy, the mission in modern China, is very simple. It will promote and accelerate the transformation of economy. It will also accelerate the society's revolution. It will help to build a connection between the general public and the wealthy celebrities. Under this context, I think we need to think of a question. When business meets charity, what our strategy will be like, including the individuals, the society, the entities, for those companies in CSR, what is the new value for us? I think this is the time that you need to show your value to the society. For the business leaders, can they participate in the charity work to lead the revolution of Chinese society as well as reshaping the business culture of China? We need to learn from other countries' experiences, including Europe and the United States, as well as other countries. Can we set up more universities, hospitals, libraries, or the gardens? Can we provide more support to the social and community services, volunteering work? 
can we have more cooperation in the global philanthropy field? Can we get the children's work more developed? Should we have more investment over the influential power of CSR? I think corporate responsibility covers two important components. The social value of the company can also be displayed through these two channels. First of all, you can go either through donation. Secondly, the entrepreneurship will also further drive the society to change. In China, we would like to see more business leaders. The business leaders is also looking forward to the further transformation of the philanthropy and the charity field. That's what I want to say today. Thank you very much. Dr. Wang Jinyao for talking about charitable economy for us. Questions? Yeah. Um, so yeah, if there's any questions, please go ahead. Any questions for Dr. Wang? Um, actually, I am a fan of Dr. Wang. I am Wang Jinyao, a fan of Dr. Wang. 那我可能虽然是，Actually, I'd like to ask a question. I'm a big fan of Dr. Wang. I'm the organizer of today's meeting, but I'm also interested to know more about the changes for charity field in China. So I would like to ask a question. I know that Dr. Wang is working with many. Charity and foundations in the U.S. I believe we can learn a lot of lessons from them. In your slides, you mentioned a little bit about it. From what I heard, the foreign foundation they can send they can issue bonds. But for the Chinese charity organization, it is still not allowed. Are there any lessons or experience we can learn from the foreign countries? For the current charity field in China, are there anything particularly we can learn from? I want to introduce you some of the changes from the State Council. If you donate the shares, it will be tax free. In the past, the Central Committee has always been supportive, but now the door is, will be completely open. What does that mean for us? That means the fundraiser and foundation will be more integrated with the finance market, so we all have to be prepared. It will be able to create more opportunities for the companies to donate. Because 100 years ago, foundation works very closely with the market, and China always believed that charity is donation instead of thinking that we can also make investment. We can buy stocks. Not to say that the foundation can also set up social enterprises. I think that is the newest policy direction that we need to pay attention to. So the values of foundations. And actually, we need to combine that with the values of enterprises. We also need to pay attention that for the private education, actually, the state council is going to um, liberalize more. So we're going to carry out private education, private hospital. That is what was encouraged by the European philanthropist several centuries ago. So now China is going through transformation. Maybe we will not say that we can take fast action in other fields, but for the fields of charity, so for us who are engaged in CSR, we need to work together with the philanthropist and the enterprise. We need to make more communication and grasp this opportunity. Thank you. Dr. Mr. Wang, 
Thank you. I know you are very senior in this field. I have a question for you. So, for enterprises to set up a foundation, do you have any instructions? We also noticed that for overseas NGO, and the government has unclear attitude. So, for foreign enterprises, if they want to set up a foundation in China, what do they need to pay attention to? First of all, I want to say, the government and f towards enterprises setting up fu foundation. Actually, it, the government will provide more convenience than other pathways because it does not involve any other issues. This is one point. Another thing I want to make is that for foreign enterprises, Anway is a very good example, right? They have registered. So, registered foundation after to set up the government and society for what do they expect from foreign funded enterprises? They expect some innovation, some if you can introduce more advanced experiences in other countries, be more active. Do not say that China, Chinese government does not support charity or foreign funded enterprises. It's not like that because Chinese government, Chinese culture, Chinese charity field and Chinese public, what they, their definition of of charity is like and Concord Hospital set up by Rockefeller and also a lot of schools were set up by the pictures. So actually historically there are a lot of charity projects which have been set up historically. So actually we attach more expectations to uh, projects so you need to think more flexibly. That is what I want, want to say. One more here. Dr. Wan, so I'm f from the um, public wealth uh, organization in the U.S. So we are, um, we are doing some case studies about um, social welfare payback. So we also encounter some challenges like uh, our identity is very sensitive and there are a lot of emerging organizations in China. So what do you see for the development of foreign organizations? I want to thank your your organization. I think you have set up you have organized a lot of meaningful projects including study tours that actually broaden the horizons of many people. I think there are some obstacles are both ways. On one side, the government and the general public do not have experiences. They don't know how to work together with you, with U.S. organizations. And also for international organizations, when you enter China, sometimes in the interface, there are also some problems with adaptation. So it takes some time for the adaptation. So according to my experience that for international organizations, you need to learn from Bill Gates Foundation. You need to learn from Enway Foundation. Actually, the foundations, of course, also Rockefeller Foundation, they have done a lot of consultation. They approached the government, a lot of friends, They've done a lot of consultation, so their activities are very much matched with the requirements of the government, the needs of the general public. Of, although they would also have challenges, but they will have a very high starting point when they enter China. For example, Anway Foundation, when they during that registration, so. 
I was in the charity section in the Ministry of Internal Affairs. They visited our ministry and they asked me to do one hour presentation and we also have dialogue. So through those dialogues we can understand each other a lot more and they have provided a lot of information. Indeed, they have done a very good PR. I think for international charity organizations, when you enter China, you need to be good at communicating with the government authorities and domestic charity organizations so that you can have a very influential framework. Thank you. Very inspirational. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you.